everyone, welcome to the Nintendo Pride Podcast, episode 25, and I am Nathaniel Rufflejance, your host, joined as always by Mr. Eric Moore. How's it going? And this week we have only three topics to talk about, but they have multiple parts to each topic, and a lot of this is because there was a Nintendo Direct last week. Now, we technically did our very first ever Nintendo Prime Reacts video. You were not part of that, Eric. I am sorry. No. But 5J Gaming joined us. And there was a lot of comments after that video that some people would like us to add some more voices to the podcast. Not just us two all the time. Or <laughs> us two all the time plus more people. And that makes sense. A lot of podcasts oh, right, right, have three yeah. people, four people, five. Uh, and obviously, we don't have enough in-person friends that care enough about Nintendo to, to have them here. Otherwise, I would love to set them all up here and, and oh, do like yeah, a big, sure. big in-person podcast like we did at Zelda Informer back in yeah. the day when we were at uh, E3 last year. But uh, what I can tell you is I am in talks with a few people on trying to get at least a regular third voice or a rotating third voice every week, whether it's Darren, whether it's 5J Gaming, whether it's Daniel, which some of our people on YouTube will know from some videos he's done, or whether it's someone that, you know, a guest, Mason of Delfino, who we've had in the past, HMK, who hasn't yeah. been on this podcast yet, but... Uh, we, we have, I'm, I'm going to put some feelers out there because I get it. You know, sometimes you want to hear someone else's voice on this channel besides just me rambling nonstop all the time and Eric going, all right. Yep. I all agree. right. Giggity, giggity. Um, <laughs> all right. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, we're just going to hop right into it. And the first time we're going to talk about is arms and we're not going to talk about the Nintendo direct stuff because as I said, we kind of covered all that in the reactions to it. But we are going to talk about some stuff that wasn't in the Direct. And part of this is the fact that there was an in-person event where media got to actually play the game for a significant amount of time. There's a bunch of footage of it out now on, on YouTube. And uh, one media in particular that everyone always looks forward to playing these games is Digital Foundry from Eurogamer. Because Digital Foundry, they do tech analysis. So they aren't necessarily looking to review the game and tell you this is how good the game is. Rather, they look at how good well it runs. Mm -hmm. they, 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 do, they count pixels. They count frame rates. They, they look at draw distance. They look at anti-aliasing and shadow work and lighting. and They, they kind of break down all of that stuff. And so for people who care about you know, having the, te the most technically impressive game possible, that's something that you go to Digital Foundry and trust their, generally trust their opinion on. Uh, and... They sat down with ARMS and got to record an hour and a half of direct feed footage. So this is all based on the docked version, not necessarily what's on handheld. Which, again, handheld is also hard to judge because there's no way to get a direct feed of handheld mode. Not even Nintendo themselves has a direct feed of handheld. Really? So, huh? it is what it is. Now, what we learned is some very interesting things. For starters... Get into the really, really, really good stuff. If you're going to be playing ARMS by yourself in your house all the time or against people online by yourself, generally, if no one else is ever going to use split screen with you and it's always going to be you on a single screen, this game is going to run at 1080p, 60fps, or 720p, 60fps in handheld. That is awesome. Full, t full HD, which is the max the system can output, plus 60fps, smooth 60 fps zero dips in their hour and a half of footage there wasn't even one frame dropped anywhere or a half frame or anything that is beyond impressive and that's across all modes now the exception to the 60 fps rule is if there is a four player split screen on a single system mm -hmm. now there are modes in arms that support four players uh the 2v2 mode specifically so in that case the resolution not only gets cut to 900p, it cuts the frame rates down to 30 fps. And like in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, when you have the four-player split screen, it's one side up, 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 like the left side, I believe, updates one frame, and then the right side updates a frame later. And it's not really that noticeable, but it is very noticeable that you are no longer running. So, like, basically, what what is happening is the whole screen's still refreshing at 60 fps, but each individual player's screen is only only refreshing at 30 so i know that for, for non-tech people that doesn't mean much but essentially <laughs> gameplay wise it's very noticeable since the rest of the time you play the game it's at 60 fps and dropping down to 30 in those instances in very hectic situations didn't feel that great they noted however again this is just on a single system so if you're doing four player and you have two players on one switch two players on another switch not a problem everyone's running at 60 fps now, I did note the 900p point. Anytime you are in split screen at all in ARMS, it runs at 900p. 
And obviously, as I said, 720p undocked because that's the max that can do. So it's interesting that the, uh, here's why this matters. This is the first full triple A game made exclusively for Nintendo Switch hardware. It's not a port. Mm-hmm. Breath of the Wild was a port. port. Yep. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was a port. And as impressive as those games may be, none of them have anything to do with what the max possible capabilities of the system are. And ARMS might not even either. But it's really interesting that what they did, and this I wish more developers would do this, is they targeted, they basically said, look, we're going to try to keep this game at 60 FPS all the time that we possibly can. They couldn't pull it off in four-player, but they're like, look, we're going to keep it at 60 FPS as much as we can. So we're just going to cut resolution. And I think that's a smart move because we're talking about a fighting game. Precise button presses, precise even you know in this game with the motion controls, precise motions and flicks, and right, and, and right. you know even button presses involved in all that. Like there's a lot of precise move, move moments where if a frame drops, that can mean the difference between your victory or your defeat if it didn't drop for the other player. Yeah, and it depends on what you were doing at the time. So it's I, I love that they said, look, we're going 60 FPS. It's going to be 60 FPS. We're just going to drop resolution. And I almost wish in, in four-player split screen they would have dropped the 720p. But I think the reason that they said, look, we're going to keep it at 900 is because it's four-player split. you got to, like, pixel density. You don't want it to, like, be, like, noticeably worse quality-wise. Right, right. Because you're talking about 720 p split across four things i know yeah, I, i'm yeah, having a hard time yeah. talking uh so getting into into this bunch like are you impressed by this or is it just what you expected because this is the mario kart 8 deluxe team making this or mario kart 8 team sorry yeah. deluxe was, was made by a suffolk group oh really okay yeah. um yeah that it is actually kind of impressive that they were able to get that much out of this game you know for being the first major title that is strictly a switch release so, I, it. How do I want to put this? <laughs> it, it's impressive. It is actually very impressive that they can have this be the way it is, except for in like one certain circumstance. Yeah, so, and there's breakable environments. Um, they noted that there does seem to be some sort of aliasing going on, which. For Nintendo, that's like a first. Nintendo does not use anti-aliasing like in either games. Even Mario Kart 8 Deluxe does not have it. So if you look closely at the edges of the characters and the models and everything, you can notice some jaggies. And in this game, you don't really notice them that much, which means there's something, some sort of pro- post-processing going on. And uh, that's just that's great. Like the lighting's great. Uh, you know, it, the, the, it's one of those things you can kind of tell it's the Mario Kart 8 team because it kind of feels like their style. But it's so stylistic in how they approached it that it doesn't, it's definitely not Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, this is going to kind of lead into the next point because during the Direct, they announced three new characters and all these new stuff. And I just want to know what, there's 10, I I believe 10 playable characters at launch. Yeah, there's 10 playable characters at launch. They're going to release more post release content and stuff and treat it like Splatoon. Of course. But I want to know, Eric. I know that you are still on the fence with ARMS about getting it. So, it like, you might get it someday. Oh, yeah. It, but oh, day, day one, one it, it's... Not sure. Not sure. Just to, depending now, on if I have the cash in the bank now, at the time. It, there's, so. the, there's the money issue. And also, next weekend, or this upcoming weekend, they're going to have a global test fire where we could try it. Or, really? I'm sorry. Global test punch. Test fire is for... Oh, soon. right, right. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, really? So we'll, we'll get a chance to try it out next weekend. Nice. So... Again, we'll be able to see if it really is all it's cracked up to be, at least from what they allow us to play of it. Now, what I wanted to know, though, what is your favorite character design? They're, because these designs are highly unique for these they characters. They are. They are. I, to be honest, I actually do really like them all. Well. but oh, Right, right. No, no, no that, that's that's just mean, one thing. But I think. I like all uh, sports, but I still have favorites. Well, right. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, I think I like Master Mummy the most. Why is that? It's just. I don't know. It's just the, the mummy. The mummy. It, it's kind of awesome. Uh, he's big, bulky, you know, and then it, it reminds me kind of a, of a Moomoo from League of Legends mm. a little bit. Okay, okay. So, and I, I like playing a Moomoo. So, <laughs> um, I know my sister, I had to actually ask her and showed her the, the list of the characters. Yeah. Uh, what is it, Mechanica? Yeah. 
Uh, she likes that because it, it looks like a yellow version of Baymax from uh, Big Hero 6. <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. And she's the so. only one who... So, fun, they, they kind of gave some backstory in ARMS during the direct, and essentially it's, we don't know what happened. These people just woke up with it someday, one day, and had these oh. ARM things. is really weird. Okay, and interesting. And she, that one that your sister likes, she is the only one that did not wake up and have anything funky going on. No. She was actually that She way. built a robot. Oh, okay. To compete. Oh, actually, you know, that actually makes sense because yeah. looking at her, yeah. looking at everybody yeah. else, they are actual human body where it looks like she's in a robot. She's suit. in a robot suit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to sound like a total sellout on this one, but it's only because I, I can't believe Nintendo did it. So I'm going to say my favorite character. Oh, it's a toss up. I really like Helix a lot. Really, really, really like Helix. It's some failed science experiment that is a green blob that just can bend and twist and do all these funky oh, things. Okay, yeah. But he's probably going to end up being my favorite at the end of the day. Yeah. But I got to go with Twintella. Yeah. And it's impressive there, too. One, she's the only one who uses her hair instead of her arms. So like something funky oh, happened yeah, to her yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah. Um, two, she's apparently like super, super famous. That, that's like her backstory. Okay. She's super famous. Nice. And three, she is thick. <laughs> she is thick and the thing is it i don't really care that she is but it's the fact that nintendo put a character in that is so obviously thick and it's not just that they put her in if you go back and you watch the direct and the footage they clearly show off her um, assets aha uh-huh. which nintendo does not typically do uh-huh um like this is all bayonetta style kind <laughs> of in a way um and it's probably part of her personality, I'm assuming. Like, she, she's thick. She knows it. She's proud of it. She's a famous singer or something like that. So, like, oh, yeah. Like, who cares? But I just can't believe Nintendo did it. So, like, just for the t- pure decision of Nintendo's the team in Japan to be like, look, we're going to put in a colored character that is thick mm-hmm. and owns her sexiness. It's kind of a... Hey, good on them. What, like, I, I know there's a lot of... You know, social justice warriors and feminists would be like, "Oh, we don't want women represented this way." Like, do women exist in this way? It, right, exactly. So, it, um, it's just what, because all, all the people I see excited about it seem to be males, and it's like, "Well, yeah, I get it." Well, right, but it's like, but she's not like overly sexualized. She just has a big butt, yeah, and she's proud of it. Or, the, well, the thing is, though, too, is would you rather see all these stick figures that are constantly all over gaming? They they complain about that all the time. But then you actually get one that has semi-decent human proportions, and now you're going to bitch about that. Well, Excuse it's because my they're focusing on her assets. That's uh, the yeah, problem. But, uh, Sexualizing her. Uh, but, you know, it's... I know, and the thing is, we're two men, so yeah, our opinions right. are automatically dismissed. It's right. just the way it is. Right. It's just like the argument that um, I've heard that some people of certain uh, races where they're like... Oh, you're white, so everything you say is automatically dismissed, and I'm just like, that's racism. Yeah, that's racism right there. <laughs> you're literally yeah. like, you can't sit there and be like, I'm not a racist, but because you're white, you're, ra- you're like, your opinion doesn't count. Yeah, right. Just, yeah, that's not how that works. We're, we're all people. Right. Exactly. So, people like, I'm happy that Nintendo did this because it's showing a. Nintendo doesn't have a lot of characters that are overly sexualized in the first place. So, right. like, they're one of the least companies for you to go after to be like, well, we're mad because all your characters are this way. They're not. Yeah. So the fact that oh, Nintendo sure. has one in this game like that is sweet. Like, I- I'm just glad that Nintendo's recognizing that people are diverse and we need to start including some of that diversity in our games. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I'm really proud of that character. Again, I think Helix will probably be my favorite, but we'll see. When the game comes, you know, when the game comes out, we'll get to actually. Helix is one of the characters we can play with during the okay. during the test. Nice. Uh, we can't play with her, so well, yeah, that kind of makes sense. New release, kind of, but so. we'll see. Uh, you cannot launch, just not doing the, well, just right, not right, doing their test. Right. So that's just kind of my take on that. Uh, shall we move on to our next topic? Sure. Because <laughs> I, I mean, do you have anything yeah. else you want to say about arms? You know, I don't know if you even saw the direct. No, I didn't. I didn't watch the direct. You got to give me more heads up on this, <laughs> so then I can actually. You got to pay more attention. Uh, yeah, there's that. If you just visited NintendoPrime.net, yeah. you would know. <laughs> I'm just saying, you oh. are a co-host on the Nintendo Prime podcast. You can visit the site. All right, I'm on here every day. Every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, right. I, no, didn't I know, update. I know. Yeah, no. that's true. That is true. So don't blame me. I'm a busy man. Yeah, I know. All right. Um, no, I have nothing else to say on that. So we're good. <laughs>